What's cracking boys and girls? Chris here, Chris said the Wii, and today we have a cheeky chat about the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. That's right, I finally decided to start talking about these books in order rather than just randomly because, uh, you know, it just makes more sense for you guys. And then I even swapped out the Minecraft footage for gameplay footage of the game for the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. You know, I'm treating you here. If you want a, uh, a cheeky little review of the game itself, you know, just comment, give me a comment, and I will. You know, it's one of those things I'm interested in. I enjoy the game. You know, enough waffling on. I'm gonna try and sell you this book. I'm gonna try and sell you this book as if, you know, I'm a marketing man, you know, I'm a, a salesman. I'm knocking your door and I'm like, all right, there, pal, you, you, uh, you wanna buy a book? You wanna buy a, a game book? Well, I got just a game book for you. So, The Warlock of Firetop Mountain. Why should you buy this book? Why should you spend your hard-earned cash on this book? On this game book? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, right this second, right here. Long story short, the book is really good. It's written really well. And you can tell they put a lot of faith in this book doing well because of all the references. It's filled with charm. And at the end of the day, it's like a perfect blend between a book and Dungeons and Dragons. You can have a small adventure by yourself. In your bed, on a train, on a boat, in a car, in a go-kart even, as long as you drive in responsibly. And with this being book number one, it's the perfect starting point to start your collection, you know. If you like this book, well, just move on to book number two. If you don't like this book, well, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained, you know. You gave it an honest go, and it just wasn't for you. You know, I mentioned the references. They're all nice little Easter eggs. They make sense. They made sense in the 80s, but they've aged incredibly well. They still are relevant today and personally I'm gonna put the cherry on the icing the icing on the cake the icing on the cherry you know the artwork is really what sells it for me I've always loved the illustrations and the illustrations in the Warlock of Firetop Mountain are phenomenal they're cute they're wholesome they're nerdy they're lovely they're eye candy and I'm sure you will enjoy them so in summary why you should get this book is because it's really good you know it's the closest thing that you're gonna get to D&D &D without playing D&D &D. it's this lovely nerdy wholesome charming adventure in the palm of your hands you know you put it in your bag put it in your purse heck you could probably put it in your pocket and off you go you can have an adventure down the park where you're slaying orcs goblins zombies it's amazing so hopefully i've left you wanting a buck rather than just leaving you confused you know so i'm gonna go on now i'm gonna go on i'm gonna talk about this book in more depth i'm gonna talk about what i liked what i didn't like and i'm just gonna give you know a general synopsis maybe a general review a cheeky chat a very informal review on the warlock of firetop mountain so what is the warlock of firetop mountain what is fighting fantasies warlock of firetop mountain well on the back it says part story part game this is a book with a difference one in which you become the hero a pencil and an eraser are all you need to make a journey you decide which route to take which creatures to fight which dangers to risk the Warlock of Firetop Mountain being a game book is where the magic comes in. You get to make your own decisions. You can choose between picking up maybe a sword or a shield, maybe adding a piece of food to your backpack for you to eat later. Maybe it's just drinking a potion, you know, these decisions are down to you and that's where the magic comes in. I love it. And I could honestly gush about the game book being a game book. I could honestly go on about game books in general all day. But I want to get into the story, I want to get into the start, I want to get into the adventure, I want to talk about the book, that's why you're here. So the start of the book just has you meandering through a village, and you're hearing rumours about the Warlock of Firetop Mountain, you're hearing rumours of how dangerous it is, and how wealthy he is, you know, you know this guy's completely loaded, this guy has more money then you have brain cells and that's appealing to you you think this guy's dangerous this guy's extremely wealthy i could take him out and i've got enough money to buy whatever i want for the rest of my life whether it be cod points lip fillers or even just bread you know maybe like a little bit of bread in the morning so you being the hero you're know, like well you know i really want this guy's money but i also want to save the day so i'm gonna head off do what i need to do get rid of this guy and then everyone's safe. What's not to love? I'm gonna be rich and I'm gonna be a hero. Yay. And one of the best parts or the best bit about uh, this little introduction paragraph, it drops a lot of foreshadowing, you know, it, 
gives you a lot of information that you might brush off as being well you know they're just rumors they're actually sharp in the buck who would have guessed you know some of these rumors are actually quite right and although you brush them off as just being rumors a bit of uh, a bit of law a bit of filler it's uh, it's phenomenal you know one rumor might be that the wizard the warlock zargo himself has pink governments and these are enchanted but then when you encounter the guy he's pulling out a bun with pink governments on and the magic and it's like wow i would never have guessed that that's quite uh, that's, that's something that is but enough rambling you uh you eventually leave you know everyone says good luck good luck uh they give you a going away card you know everyone signed there and you head off to firetop mountain and you find yourself at the base you find yourself at the base looking in and it's this creepy little hole so you think well in for a penny in for a pound here i go and that's uh, that's really where your adventure starts so your uh, your main objective here is to just make it through this goblin slash orc stronghold you know i think in the game it calls it a barracks i just thought of it as a stronghold because it's where a bunch of them live you know if they're green they're mean just you know kick them in a bit but yeah this is your objective now you just need to get through this place alive and you're gonna bump into the occasional trap you're gonna bump into you know a nice character and there's a really really nice uh, nice little uh, opportunity you get where you bump into two goblins torturing a dwarf and you get the choice to just walk in stab the dwarf and laugh like a maniac and what do you believe it confuses the goblins to the point where they just leave it's amazing I will say however I think I do believe because it's in the game and I've played the game more than I've actually read the book in the game you get an opportunity to take a path which will take you through an area which will end up in you obtaining a key item you need this key item otherwise you know you just can't win but it's really easy to miss so just keep your eyes open if you do get this book you know you're gonna have to keep your eyes open for this path because it's not really advertised it's not really you know telegraphed that you need to go this way but you actually do so whether or not you go through these dwarven ruins you know you'll you'll go through one area or the other and you'll find yourself at a river bank and there's a sign saying ring the bell pay two gold pieces and the ferryman will take you across the river and this is the thing the sign says two gold pieces but when the ferryman comes over he demands three of them I found this kind of funny because uh, you argue with a dude and he just blames inflation and it just reminds me of catching the trains, you know, the British train service. It's all abysmal, you know, the prices go up, but then the service just sort of either stays the same or it goes down, you know. On a good day, it's uh, it's just the same. On a bad day, they'll uh, delay a train by maybe 40 minutes, wait for the platform to get absolutely rammed and then send a two-carriage arriver. It's, uh, it is what it is though, isn't it? But you traveling across this river really, to me, it indicates that you're traveling from the first half of the book into the second half of the book. And uh, that's how I've written it in my notes. That's how I've written it in my script. You know, first part up until the river, second part after the river. And unfortunately, what I've got written for part two simply is maze. And you're going to understand if you read the book. You're going to understand in maybe about four minutes when I talk about it. You know, because there's, uh, there's a few bits and bobs you can do beforehand that I find quite fun. So, I'm just going to cheekily talk about them first. So, what I did, I, uh, I put my head into a shack, got clubbed by some zombies, and ended up having to fight my way out. It's funny. It felt like a little ambush, and the zombies you know, were kind of creepy. Let's not, be, uh, let's not lie. And the thing is, when you fight these zombies, you end up getting some uh, some nice little uh, nice little bits and bobs from a dead adventurer. You know, they've already ambushed an adventurer, and they just weren't lucky enough to have survived like you have. So, you uh, you destroy the zombies, and then you just get a pick through this guy's belongings. It's uh, it's kind of fantastic. And there's one thing that I really want to point out with this guy. He's holding a crucifix, or he's got a crucifix around his neck. He owns a crucifix, and this book is from the eighties. Any reference to a crucifix is a uh, foreshadowing of a vampire. So I'm gonna say, pick that bad boy up, keep it in your pocket. You're gonna need it. So there's also a shack nearby, but I completely avoided it. You know, I didn't even. Uh, I don't think I had the opportunity to go there. I think I just made the wrong choice, and I found myself here. But then the next thing I remember is being in this crypt. And uh, lo and behold, that crucifix actually comes in handy. So you're fighting a vampire, and if you like me, you uh, you completely forget that you're holding a stake and that you can actually fight the vampire. So I just uh, sort of pull out the crucifix, hold it at bay, and then really just enter this maze. Now this maze holds a special place in my heart. You know, this maze—it um, was the maze that broke me. 
I read this book when I had a cracking headache and I just couldn't work out the maze. You know, I ended up going online and found the solution. It was just annoying me. At this point, I had gone all the items I needed from the maze. I had met all the fun little characters, you know, you bump into this room and there's four little dudes, literally little dudes, they're like uh, a metre so, sat around the table and you know, it felt like a wholesome reference to maybe, you know, the author's D&D &D group, you know, the lads. It was funny, it was wholesome, but ultimately the maze really annoyed me and it made my headache much worse. There was one nice encounter where you meet this guy who is actually the master of the maze and he refers to himself as the dungeon master. It just felt like a nice little cute little, uh, you know, charming little reference to Dungeons and Dragons again. I like that, but ultimately, yeah, I didn't like the maze. The maze holds a special place in my heart because I just don't like it. I didn't like it. And if you're going to go into this book, I honestly recommend mapping the maze. I recommend getting out a pen and paper and just sort of drawing where you're going because you're going to find it a lot easier once you fully map the place out. But yeah, once you complete the maze, you uh, you bump into the final encounter, Zago, the, the warlock of Firetop Mountain. You bump into the big bad evil guy. And to be brutally honest, the guy doesn't seem that evil. He seems, you know, he seems to, he just knows. He knows he's going to have to fight you. And, you know, he's just so content. You know, he, he doesn't care. He just wants to fight you, get it over and done with. And, you know, you enter this room knowing only one of you will be leaving that room. I really like this fight. I actually found it quite fun. You know, I used a key item. I don't know if you have to, but I did. And, uh, yeah, I won. You win. You beat Zago. And you get claim to his riches, to his vast amount of wealth. And what happens is you go on and you encounter a chest. The best part about this chest is that you need three keys. And if you haven't got those three keys, it, the reference even says, you know, you just sort of sit there and cry because you understand that you need to go through the book again. I love it, you know. But what happens is, if you got the keys, you open that bad boy up, and it's just you're minted. You've got enough money to last your lifetime. You once again, you know, you got more gold coins than brain cells, and it's phenomenal. So that's the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. Would I recommend it? Yeah, I recommend it. You know, it's good. It's actually a really nice little adventure. I really love the first half. You know, the maze for me is gonna just bring back bad memories because I had one of the worst headaches going. But, you know, if my head wasn't hurting, I probably would have worked it out in about five minutes and it wouldn't have been a problem, you know. And that's the thing. The maze really isn't as big of a problem as I made it out to be. It's just I had a really bad headache. So, in conclusion, I really like the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. I would 100% recommend it to you. You know, even if you have a collection, you just don't have them all in order, pick up number one. You know, what have you got to lose? It's number one. It's a nice starting point for any collection. And because it's a game book, you know, it's a game, there are rules, you know, and you need dice. And the rules are so simple that you can homebrew them. You can make them whatever you want, you know. If you want the book to be harder, well, just tweak the rules. You know, if you and a friend are reading the book together, well, you can read the book together. You're just two adventurers going through the same adventure. You could tag team all of the monsters and collect key items separately. But that just about wraps it up, you know. I think the book's amazing. I honestly think you should get it, you know. It's just something that's just fun and wholesome. And it's just a joy to read. But yeah, you know. You know, I tried something else for this video. I cut out the bit with the book covers. I don't know if it really impacts the, uh, the experience at the end of the day. You know, the art style is different in the Scholastic version to the previous editions. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really impact your adventure. And I think your enjoyment of your adventure is one of the most important things ever but you know if you like me talking about book covers feel free to comment and i'll chuck it in the next video you know i'm just trying to figure out where i stand on this you know how i'm doing these videos i'm trying to figure out what works so yeah you know feel free to like comment and subscribe you know i could do with the growth and at the end of the day i got loads of things that i want to try out down the line you know loads of things that you know i'm interested in that maybe you're interested in and i'm going to start trying to plug my youtube and my instagram you know vice versa get some growth going so then you know I'm, I'm putting out these videos and people are actually enjoying them you know i can't wait so yeah thanks for watching i hope you have a really nice day a really nice night i hope your next 24 hours your next week your next day are just absolutely amazing take care